we've got a puzzle for you, and that's what is this sound? It's a pretty hard one. There's a man here on the phone now who's going to hopefully tell us what that uh, what that sound is all about. And that's Mr. Steve Donaldson. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Can you tell people what the sound was? I'll just play it again. If I can get it up on here, I'll play it again. What this sound is. That's one of those really hard uh, radio quizzes, isn't it? What did you say it is, Steve? Well, that's an, and that's an unusual little critter that's not very well known, and it's a native marsupial called a brush-tailed fast gale. Oh, that's astonishing. How on earth did you guess that? <laughs> I've been working with students at Crusoe College and with Parks um, with the ranger at uh, Crusoe Reservoir, and um, uh. we've got a project that sort of supports the... Um, the sustainability aspect of uh, maintaining the species because they're threatened. Okay, now the brush-tailed fascagale, it's, I had a look on the net and it's like a small, sharp-nosed, big-eared, obviously brush-tailed, little marsupial critter. And uh, what's, has there been a problem in terms of the environment? How's, what's the problem with the brush tail? Well, the brush-tailed fascagale, um, generally the, the females only live up to three years and the male sometimes is lucky to see its first birthday. Really? And is that just the way they're built or is it some bad yeah. problems with the environment or diet? Well, a bit of both. It's, it's partly the way they're built also, but um, one of the issues is that the, the predators being so close to residential areas, a national park like uh, the Crito Res, um, but also that the habitats that they require to support their environment. You know, they like to sort of squirrel away into little tree hollows and, mm. and little bits and pieces like that. And um, the, the males only sort of live to their first birthday sometimes um, because they get a bit stressed uh, doing the deed. Right. All right. It's, it's very stressful life, life for them by the sound of it. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay. Is that why you decided to help them out? Well, we were approached by the ranger at Parks mm -hmm. Res and some uh, representative friends of Crusoe Reservoir and Number 7 Park. Right. So the, the, request, the request was, um, would students in the technology classes be able to assist them by constructing some nesting boxes? All right, so this is just to help, as you're saying, their environment is uh, obviously under threat. So this at least will give them a safe place to, uh, as you say, do their, do their business. Yeah, so we've got students in Year 7 who, for this part of the semester since uh, Term 1, have been researching the, the critter and, and working on ways to assist them. They developed their own questions. And um, we also had a client, so the client was the, the parks ranger. They sort of said, well, here's a design of the nesting box that we know that works. Right. So even though the students are doing a design class, the nesting box was already provided as a design. So we turned around and said to the students, OK, we're, we're making nesting boxes for this particular native marsupial, but what species is local to your own home, you know, in your backyard? Mm -hmm. So we can design a nesting box to suit those. Oh, I see. So it's a bit more than just, yeah, it's a one project and you get them using their, their design brains as well. Correct. So they also get to make something for themselves to take home. Now, also, do you find that it gives it more focus from the kids' point? And what, what sort of children are you, what age are we talking about here, Year 7? Oh, these Year 7 students are from 12 years old to 13 years old. Okay, so that, it's a great age in terms of getting their enthusiasm going if you can. Do you find having a particular focus like this, rather than just saying, OK, our project this year is to build nesting boxes for unknown animals, but if you actually give them a specific focus, like, look, the Fasca gale needs a bit of help and that sort of thing, that they, they sort of come on board a bit more? Oh, yeah, they're very keen and eager, and one of the added bonuses is when these nesting boxes are completed, they're going to assist the ranger in putting them in various locations in the park. Oh, that'll be nice. They actually get out there, and then hopefully also, too, a bit later than that, they can come along and see if the nesting boxes have been used. Exactly. They've got a um, volunteer who has a specialised camera that can do an inspection of the nesting boxes without disturbing the, the, the critter, so... Hopefully we'll get an opportunity to walk around with this volunteer and, and inspect some of the nesting boxes at a later date. Right, using his special X-ray camera. Uh, it's like a little camera, you know, a little peep camera that sort of pokes through the entry hole oh, of the right, nesting box. Right. Oh, that's crafty. It is. And the response of the kids has been. Oh, they love it. They've, they've been getting involved. Um, you know, they've used the machinery in the workshop to construct the actual various components of the nesting box and. And they're using the tools to assemble the nesting boxes. 
Excellent. Now, you sent me some uh, photos of the box as well, so I'll pop them up on our Facebook page, folks, after I get off here, and we'll put them on Facebook so you can see what we're talking about. And how long does it take them to build one of these boxes? Well, in reality, if, if we were to actually just build it from the materials, you, mm. you could really do it in about six weeks. Right. But, but we sort of have a bit of research and a bit of design planning. The students learn how to draw the various components up as part of the design class. So it's a sort of a full program where they start with the design idea and the, mm. and the reason why we have the nest and box that shape. We have the client, which is Parks Victoria and the Friends of Crusoe Reservoir. Right. And um, they've learnt the skills and they have to learn how to use the machinery safely. Is that, is that a problem with 13-year-old boys using machinery safely? I'm just trying to remember what I was doing with woodworking at that age and it was pretty chaotic. Oh, they're pretty keen, and you know we've got a class of girls and boys in Year mm. Seven. And no, and I wasn't. I wasn't worried about the girls. The girls are very sensible; they'll be fine. It was the boys I was worried about. Oh no, no, no! They're they, they're using sort of belt and disc sanders and um, drills with hole saws mm. and, and various tools like that. Do you find at all is that a uh, is that a problem? I mean, for me, it's it's a bit harder, I suppose. I didn't have kids myself, so I'm always worried much more. You know, it's the whole syndrome of you see with parents, the first child, they're so careful and so worried about everything and, oh, you've got a, you've got a runny nose, we'll go and take you to emergency department of the hospital. And by the fourth and fifth kids, they're just going, oh, you know, shut up, Johnny, or we'll fix your broken leg tomorrow. So, And I've got that initial thing. I've never had kids, so I've never got over the worry about them. And in your situation, I'd be worried about all the, uh, the kids using the electronic tools and so on, but they sound very competent. Oh, no, it is training. You know, when we go through the training, we, we do a licence test for the machinery, and then we sit down on, and then we sort of go through the machine processes individually. And then when they come to use the machinery, we're standing with them on one-to-one while they get, become familiar with it and know the, the correct procedures. No, it's excellent. I mean, it's great, yes. Once you give them those skills, it's going to be fantastic. And also the fact they're doing it as a whole project. As you say, they've got a client, they've got a design. It's as if they're setting up their own design business. It is. It is, and one of the advantages is that we've got some modern modern tools and machinery, so the students are going to laser engrave um, labels that will be placed on the bottom of the box, and it, uh-huh. so it, it's sort of a bit of an ownership to the box. This is made by so-and-so from Crusoe, and mm. it also involves Lockwood Primary School students. Oh, what are they doing? Well, they're assisting by doing some painting of the boxes and attaching the labels to the boxes. That's not, well, I'd like to hear the primary school kids are charging the older kids for doing that work for them. That'd be good. That'd teach them a bit of responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a bit of an understanding of money on their own side. And when do these going out? Have the boxes started going out yet, Steve? Well, they've got a few already at the, the parks that have been built by some other organisations because we're trying to manufacture as many nesting boxes as possible. So we're tasked with making about 40 of these. Right. And um, we've got about nearly 20 of them already completed, so they'll be um, sent off shortly. Oh, excellent. And is there a particular, I suppose, as we're getting into the cold weather too, that's when they'd really need them, is it? Yeah, well, the mating season is usually May and June, so we'll probably miss this particular mating season. But the issue is, is once they're out there, it's, it's a, a habitat and a, and a bit of a home for them. Yeah, exactly. It's a good spot and they can keep coming back. And the, I'm sure the fast girls will look at the bottom of the boxes and see who made it for them. Correct. They're a very appreciative small mass of people. All right, Steve, look, I think it's a fantastic job. We'll have to get uh, you to send us in once you go out with your special camera. If we get a nice picture of the uh, a, a box being full of Fasca Gales, you have to send it into us and we'll pop it up on our Facebook page as well. No worries. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. That's Steve Donaldson there from uh, Crusoe College. We've got 